Hi there, my name is Delaney King and I'm a video games artist and in this little tutorial I'm going to be showing you how generally old rules may not necessarily apply when it comes to optimization. What I've got here is two, um, two example geos. We've got the high geo and the low geo and in this particular case it's, it's actually quite a small part of a large object so I've got um, this solution here for optimized geo. Now, this is uh, the high res, so this would bake onto this one. So, having bear in mind that that's the high res, we're just going to hide that. We don't need that, and we're going to look at what I call one of my bugbears. Now, in the 90s, this technique for saving polygons and resources um, was pretty standard and considered a very smart move. And what that was is you bisect geometry like so. Pretty cool thing. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight polygons doing um, essentially the work of two sets of objects, or a beam out the side and a beam out that side. That used to be considered perfect. That would have I would have shipped that back in the 90s quite happily. Um, but times have changed, and the old rules don't necessarily apply. With this particular geo, um, bisection causes a huge problem in terms of memory. Instead of um, saving uh, resources and polygons, what you're actually doing is wasting. So if I move this up here, you can see what I mean. Everything that is bisected through there is invisible to the player and has no game function, and yet is being rendered still. Um, it's being sorted, it's being transformed, it's being rendered. But every pixel in there is texture memory. And so all that, if I was to uh, lay this beam out on a UV and you know, unfold it all the way around, I'm using up, what, mm, nearly a quarter, uh, yeah, 50% of my texture memory for doing the beam alone, just in stuff you'll never ever see. Now, texture memory these days is more expensive because we are using, um, instead of using a color texture, we're using, um, you know, albedo, roughness, uh, normal, uh, ambient occlusion, and on top of that, we're baking light maps as well. If your engine isn't dynamic, uh, isn't using dynamic lighting, so all in all, you're looking at quite a lot of texture memory just being thrown away. Also, wherever the bisections are, you'll get a rendering of black along here. And while we're talking on that subject, as we're raycasting between these two objects, you're not going to get a great result here where the two objects pass through. And again, you know, you can do all that baking for nothing. So I'm just going to unhide my high res model, which I've got snapped over the object. I'm going to just hide my low for a second. Um, this is just a standard game model, and to be honest, you know, I would, you know, cut more detail into this if I had the budget. But we're trying to go super, super low here. So let's say this is something for uh, like a handheld or something like that. Um, then what we want to do here is actually boolean these two pieces of geometry together. Yeah, people are going, oh, booleans. Booleans are terrible. Yes. Um, you can manually do this if you want, but in actual fact, just doing a straight union boolean works a treat in Maya. Uh, in 3ds Max, the Pro Booleans tools, if you don't know where they are, have a look under Compound Object. Uh, Pro Boolean is something I use constantly. They're absolutely incredible. And if you're one of those smug people over in Modo, you know that your booleans are the best. The best. Um, so, uh, there you go. I've just manually... Uh, cleaned up the edges, so I've just uh, I've just used the uh, multi-cut off tool here. There's several ways you can do this. You can just grab the uh, verts on either side and use connect, and then just hit return, and that will give you an edge between them. Uh, but I tend to use multi-cut because I'm, I'm just you know uh, I like moving quite quickly. Uh, having to stop and uh, you know reach for the enter key is annoying. Um, and I'm, what you're seeing here is I'm just tabbing between um, one and three. I do this constantly as I'm modeling, even if I'm not doing a subdivision surface. Um, it, because a subdivision will show you errors that your eye won't see. So, for example, let's say these um, these points here are broken. Let me just uh, detach components there. Um, if I do a subdivision smooth, you can see that. Yeah, let's see. It looks all ugly and horrible there. You think, what's going on there? There's some some nut, you know, awful stuff going on there. And now it's fixed. See. So, um, yeah, I'm constantly tabbing. If you're in 3ds Max, uh, I don't animate when I'm in 3ds Max, so I tend to map the N key to my NERMS subdivision. If you do that, that, that will allow you to quickly toggle. And if you're in Modo, you can hit Tab, of course. Um, so, 
that's all boolean. Now, what have I lost and what have I gained? Well, um, I've lost 20 polygons. Um, I've, I've added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 polygons more. I should say, poly when I say polygons, I mean triangles. Uh, I never count polygons as in that's one polygon. That's actually two triangles. So um, I, I always watch the triangle count rather than that. Um, incidentally, the true measure is UVs. The UVs is actually your true in-game um, count. That's the best one to use. So uh, I've added lots more polygons. I need 20 polygons in this particular case, but I've cut out all that texture memory that was sitting in between there, and I'm going to get a better base. So if you look now, like when I go to wireframe, everything in there is now completely cut out. That means there's no geo here that is being not seen by the player. Every single texel of texture memory is being drawn and is being used. So this is actually more efficient in terms of texture. If that's where your um, if that's where your uh, uh, engine is going to be losing out on that. That's kind of where you want to do it. So um, I'm going to just do a quick bake with this and, and show you what I mean. But before I do that, I've just got to UV map it. So I won't bore you with that. I'm going to pause this and come back in a bit. So here we are in Substance. I've done a quick bake. Um, I haven't really bothered to. Uh, I mean, this isn't uh, this isn't a serious piece of geometry. I just uh, whacked it in the ZBrush, beat the crap out of it, and then brought it across. But I just want to draw your attention to this edge here. So I think my cursor a little bit bigger. So if you have a look along there, see how that flows nice and organically around the beam. If you go on the other side, you can see that this side too also has that nice organic flow. Just look around it like so. Now, the way that's achieved is uh, it's a hack. And if I go into the wireframe mode, go on, there we go. Uh, you can see that what's happened is as it's getting towards the end of its beam, it's raycasting up here. Now, the way it's why it's doing that is because the normals get averaged in um, the bake. So this would be averaged to the medium line that runs down there. So as you can see, it, it's going to be cutting along there. Now, if I wanted to minimize the amount of crawl that was coming up here, I'd have to cut an extra line of edges into there to do the bake. Uh, I could pull them out later, but generally you just want to add those extra cuts in. And again, a few polygons won't kill you, but a good normal is worth it, absolutely worth it. So in this case here, you can see that if I break out and get rid of the wireframe and then step away, you can see the illusion is complete. And it lights as if those surfaces are way more complicated than they actually are. So that's another example of why this technique is, is a pretty good. It's not just efficient, but it gives you these nice meeting points around there. Now, your ambient occlusion will bake um, exactly the same. Your dirt will bake exactly the same. So uh, the illusion will be complete. But, um, there you go. So I hope that's helped you. And you're going to wander off now and delete all those interior faces um, and save yourself some texture memory for right now. Uh, my name is Delaney King. You can find me on Twitter at Delaney King R O X, and my website is DelaneyKing.com. I hope you had a great time watching this, and it's been very helpful. Uh, I will catch you on the flip side.